are today. We are very excited. We are launching OS Sudan National Chapter, and we have a speaker from SIDA, from OS headquarters, from INASP, and we have a speaker from Sudan as well. As an OS member, I attended many workshops and I attended conferences. I had many opportunities to participate and present myself and my research. So I felt like I have to do the same with others, give them the opportunity. There is a huge number of Sudanese scientists in Sudan, but they are not efficient. They, they need to be empowered. So our objective is different from the other OS national chapter in other countries. We need to focus on our problems, which is empowering scientists to women. So the idea of a national chapter is that uh, it's an opportunity for women from developing countries who have postgraduate degrees in science to um, meet each other and to share the challenges that they face and also to offer some solutions to each other, possibly. Um, the national chapters can organise seminars, they can organise uh, events. It really depends on the the specific uh, issues that uh, women who are scientists identify uh, are needed in their country. Although there is remarkable improvement in the tertiary education and having women in science, there is a positive trend in that, but this is in graduation, I mean in the secondary school. But when we come to the master degree, PhD degree, and to be a science employer or a researcher, there is, I mean, a sharp drop of the number of women in this, uh, I mean, uh, area. Many, many now become a member of us because they know our stories, how we started, and how we continue our career and how we develop our, ourselves. Coming together in a mental mentee relationship uh, as females who understand each other and understand our aspirations in our local community. Um, we can help women achieve within that window what they want to achieve for themselves. You don't have to wait till your kids are older to go and seek your PhD. You could have your PhD while they are still that um, young and when they are older you are actually much, much more achieved. Yeah. It is very difficult. <laughs> I remember like just before I applied to us, my father was like, no, you're not going to do a PhD. I don't know why exactly he said that, but maybe he was like so scared that I'm getting old. <laughs> the problem for the career in working in national institute or in university is so difficult because most of the universities here in Sudan is dominated by the men which men cannot allow for women to take high position. For me, I was working for two years in university here. I was working for a lecturer. Uh, I, uh, men cannot allow for me to do anything. Uh, I think when women can go together and support each other, men can know the power of a woman. <laughs> I never regretted 
doing my master's and I will never regret doing my PhD because like I, I just want to be what I want to be. CETA works in a number of different areas uh, and one of our focus is uh, gender equality and women's role in development. We see many times in uh, health, agriculture, uh, environment, um, that women come with another perspective. You have to look at the consequences for women uh, when you do the research. There needs to be a, an awareness that you need to have the gender perspective on the science. And of course it's a, it's a matter of equality also. There are very specific challenges for Sudanese women and um, only they really know what those challenges are. For example, social responsibilities that women in Sudan have and it's only you know through discussion that you start to understand what those those uh, duties are and they can be you know every evening really um, evenings which might be dedicated to research is very challenging to uh, persuade family members neighbors that actually um, they can't attend uh, because they have to be doing their research majority of the first students are females. Not only that, but in the science section, the number of females are higher than the number of males. And now if we go and categorize it, we find that in the School of Math, for example, University of Khartoum, there are more female students than male students. And this is, uh, I think, we, we made a breakthrough from the traditional picture that uh, females are not allowed to go to uh, math, especially. Uh, the Dal Group is hosting the um, workshop uh, that OST is holding for research communication for OST uh, fellows and women scientists in Sudan. It's my first workshop and I love science so I'll go for everything that relates to science and I'm really thankful that I could get this opportunity. First, I'll get exposed to a lot of people who are really good at what they're doing. Scientists, you know, the environment. And I'm hoping to learn how to write the right way because I want to be a scientist one day, so I have to, my, prof, my professor told me that I need to publish and publish and publish and never stop publishing. So I need to publish the right way and write the right way. Now, uh, actually, I finish uh, the, my uh, paper, manuscript paper. Actually, I, I submit to high impact factor. <laughs> I'm very, very, very happy. <laughs> that time, I'm very happy to, to submit. Uh, but actually, I, don't, I, I didn't know they rejected uh, immediately. Really, this is the gap between the research and the uh, publication. I want to fill this gap. So often early career researchers in developing countries have many difficulties in terms of being able to communicate their research um, effectively, particularly if they have to write in English language. So our courses provide support and assistance to these researchers to help them to be able to better communicate their research with the intention that this will enable research that's produced in countries such as Sudan uh, to reach a wider audience. Uh, I, I want to enhance my skill in uh, how to choose a, go a good topic that are, can be funded. Because as I mentioned first, that the fund is the main problem. And one key thing is to make sure that your, your proposal is matched with the funder's mission. It's matched, so why, do, why is the funder trying to give money? So uh, clearly they have something, they have a goal. So how is your project matched with the funder's goal? These are, this is something to bring out in the proposal. Um, when, in, when it comes to scientific writing or writing a paper for publication, um, uh, they must think, the researchers mu must think beyond just getting published. They must think about readers, how to get, uh, are they going to get cited? What can they do to improve, increase the impact of their research?
We've got a lot of good data in, um, in uh, Sudan, but the only problem is most of the researches that are being done are not of good quality, and at the same time, a research is never finished until those results have been communicated either to the stakeholders or to, uh, to different international uh, journals or maybe to uh, the science community, the scientific community, and therefore recommendation is never, um, is never put into action. Our research is uh, about uh, nanotechnology. We, uh, we do synthesize uh, material uh, and uh, we characterize the material uh, uh, in order to uh, applied, uh, apply them in the water treatment uh, applications. I'm working on a paper, but I'm facing problems of analysis and uh, gathering uh, the right information and know that my, 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 my uh, data is the right one and the analysis is a uh, good one. Uh, I'm facing that problem. I didn't publish it, but I'm working on it. These women, uh, they are really academically working at a high level. And they're also powerful women. And they have strong opinions. They're not afraid to voice their opinions. And, and they have a clear vision about where they're heading and how they're going to get there. And I think that has been extremely inspiring. There's an awareness uh, that women have a right to take a, a more equal place in society. Uh, and they are doing it all over the place.